Today on Gamers Couch, El Dorado. Bonjour. I have no good pun on this because I'm boring. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well. Maybe I belong into in a museum for not having a pun. There he is. I was kind of worried for a second there that I had a Cylon next to me, another Cylon, but I have my own. Hello, honey. <laughs> you can have the hat too. I can leave my hat on? I'm so amazed. Welcome, we happy, happy day, happy Sunday. I hope you have a great day so far. We are going to hopefully make it even better for you by talking about El Dorado. This is Daniel, my sweet hubby, and I'm Sarah, the artist by Pinselgeschichten and owner of this channel. And we both very, very much enjoy the hobby of board games, playing them, painting them, all the things. And today we talk about the nominee El Dorado going about it pretty much like every week. Rules and gameplay first, likes and dislikes follow with a tiny little thumb rating and funny stories and experiences. There will not be any teaser for Draw for Initiative that uh, this week because we published last week and you have to you have to have a pause so in between there. So what was it? It's calm. The board game. Or XCOM, as the non-Germans say. Yeah, well, I'm German. <laughs> At least it says that in my passport. And, and then you could say XCOM. <laughs> <laughs> but that sounds crap. Yeah, it does. I, hmm. Let's play XCOM. <laughs> Sorry. I'm snor snoring <laughs> off while saying, you may call me El Daniel now. So, no? It's El Dork, that's more like it. It's but probably the wrong pronoun. <laughs> anyway, let, let's talk about this wonderful game here and uh, play a few turns. Are you ready to talk rules and gameplay? Yes. Good boy. Well then, go ahead. You are one of those people with a um, cowboy hat, maybe whip, more probably machete, not the movie the real the thing to get through the jungle and A with the kitchen nuts and say. with that we welcome you to the jungle we got what you need and bring you to your shanaman and he's anyway uh so we <laughs> does the lion sleep no that's the other jungle <laughs> okay so, uh, each of us is playing an explorer in a two-player game. Uh, actually, each of us is playing two explorers indicated by uh, little meeples. Uh, whatever camera feels responsible. Oh, this one. This for, one. Take for this one. Me meeples. Hello. <laughs> and um, with three or four players, uh, everybody would just play a one dude. The objective of the game is incredibly simple. You have to get from the start to the finish and he who is first wins. It's a race. She. But it's not just a race. It's also a deck building game, uh, meaning each of us has a starting hand of various cards. Um, that uh, mostly correspond uh, in color with the fields you see along the racetrack. And this is uh, literally, in this case, our engine that drives us forward. Um, you could say that uh, you will be, to stay in the theme, you'll be hiring people who are more qualified than you to bring you through certain areas. So, for example, you have these uh, this explorer who can get you through the jungle. You have uh, this sailor who can get you through water. You have uh, well the the lady that's uh, kind of kind of misogynistic. You have the the girl that is in her fancy clothes, but she has money and she gets you through these desert camps. And she's I, really smart. And she's going to help yes. you out with yes. poisonous plants and yes. spider bites and I, stuff. Yes. And these these are not some some uh, desert camps where uh, we will we don't sell off the women. We keep them. They just get us through there. 
Yeah. However, They're probably act- drinking the other guys under the table like uh, she tried with the Frenchman, yeah. but then mm-hmm. unfortunately he was French <laughs> um, and uh, obviously immune to alcohol poisoning. Um, that, that's how they roll. Um, so uh, we will be shuffling these cards and you always draw up to four cards which i will probably do since i'm starting Mm -hmm. you have the head of start the starting head i'll I'll draw my my first four cards um i have to get these two white guys uh and again no no political meaning no it's just for the contrast Um, pretty much these two white uh, white guys have both to be at the at the finish line for me to win Uh, again this is just for the two-player game um You always draw up to four cards, and then you have, essentially, when it's your turn, two things that you can do with your cards. Uh, First, you can spend the cards to move your meeples. Uh, So let's say I have these two explorers uh, that would allow me to move one guy two green spaces over here, or one one and the other one one, um, and so on. Later on, you will find spaces that have more than just one symbol on here, meaning you cannot just go with one explorer in here. In fact, you can also not go with two explorers here. To get uh, on or over one of these spaces, you need someone who has at least as many icons. Uh, So in this case, we need uh, the scout here, or uh, uh, what do we have? Uh, uh, actually, those those are really difficult for me to, to translate. Explorer now. and uh, so this is more like a scientist, and yeah. this is more like an explorer. Um, so this is someone who who searches. This is someone who finds. If you want to have the better German uh, thing um, for, for that, so more qualified because he's finding. He's just searching. <laughs> he has three machetes. Um, However, if you if I would have someone with three machetes on hand, I could also go over three green spaces. So you need to have at least as many symbols uh, on a single card to enter a space. But if you still have some left and those are in total enough to get you over there, that works as well. So, for example, there's... um, yeah, off camera, there's a, a card like this guy here who gives you six uh, uh, machetes, and he has a watermelon, and that would allow you to go from over from here over a three machete field to another three machete field because they're all on a single card, if that makes sense. Uh, but I don't want to get hung up uh, too much about that. But that's essentially the mechanic for all or most of the colored fields. You have machetes for the green ones, you have uh, money for the yellow ones, uh, as I said, the sailors for, for the blue ones. Um, and uh, to uh, to move around, uh, let's say I'm playing my two explorers and move my guy two spaces up here. Now I could uh, spend my two um, tourists to also go one, two over here. But I don't think I want to do that because there's another thing I can do with my cards. I can use them to buy new cards because this is a deck building game. Uh, in this case, these are worth two coins, and that's the kind of only important part if you want to buy a card. Um, we have a little marketplace here that has always uh, six stacks of cards available. Uh, in our case, um, the, the, the price is down here, so I could, could buy a scout for one coin or um, a jack of all trades for two coins. And yes, that's a weird German word, thousand Zaza, but uh, yes. Um, Or I could uh, uh, buy this photographer for two. And uh, as you can see, this guy would generate me two machetes. This guy generates one of whatever I want. So I can choose which one he will generate, which makes him kind of, well, a jack of all trades. Surprise. Uh, Although this is a Rainer Kinizia game, there's quite a lot of theme in here. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. uh, again, uh, another another girl, but this time with a camera, so slightly richer than just the tourist, um, because this tourist already f- almost forgot her camera at home. Um, or she brought the girl with the camera with her. But she, like... she's, she's worth more than, than her. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Working folks are always working now. It... <laughs> Go on. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to be able to buy better stuff in the future, so I will pick uh, the photographer for these two coins and put it onto my discard pile. That's where also the cards go that I just played. Um, one little addition to that. Um, 
Cards that have no coins printed on them are still worth something. Each card is worth half a coin, so uh, I could also have not moved at all and spent all three cards for one, two, three coins and then bought a card that's slightly more expensive. But I chose not to. Now I discard my cards uh, onto my discard pile, draw four new ones, and that's already the point where Sarah can go. Actually, uh, if someone has made their move, um, essentially the next player can almost go forward. Because um, though there's nothing like stealing or any big interaction piece in, in here to disturb other players, there is one thing that is important. Um, there's certain spaces you cannot move onto at all. Uh, those spaces are, for example, spaces where someone else is standing. So you can effectively block someone from progressing. Uh, the other spaces that you cannot move on at all are these mountain spaces. And there's uh, regular mountains and mountains with a little cave in them. We'll get to the cave once we get to the cave. And I will explain while Sarah is now doing her turn. So I'm having two explorers and I want to move here. Uh, the other two cards, I don't want to play them. I want to keep them on hand. Yes. So I'm just discarding the ones that I played and I'm drawing up to four cards, which means another two cards. That is something that... And I drew well. That is something Obey that is that. slightly, slightly different from uh, your typical draft, uh, a deck building game, where you don't have to discard your full hand at the end of the turn, so you can keep cards to try to build up to buy an expensive card. It's also a hand building game. Yes. Uh, I will do something very similar. I'll play uh, these two. So I'm, They cannot see. They can see up oh, to I'm, the market. I'm sorry. Uh, I no will problem. play these two cards, uh, move this guy to green and then to blue. Now, uh, there's uh, this uh, little fence over here, and that's actually between all those tiles. And yes, they are modular, so you can create your own way. There are a bunch of uh, uh, suggestions in, in the game, which kinds of tracks you can do. Um, now, these are like an additional hurdle to take. Uh, to get rid of that, you have to spend a card, uh, then take it away. So the first player to go, uh, who has, uh, goes over there has to pay a little bit more, kind of slowing them down as a catch-up mechanic uh, for uh, the other players who might be not as far ahead. However, if uh, the game ends in a tie, the player who has the most of those wins because he obviously had the Did all the heavy through. lifting. So these are your cards Yes, they as go well. into the... the... So you're holding back your other two cards? Can I go? Yes, I'm, okay. I'm done. I'm having four money and I want to have this um, telephone. <laughs> Why do they not just say telephone? But Fernsprechgerät. Because it's not a telephone. It's, uh, it's the um, same thing. It's, uh, uh, oh, what's it, what are they called? It's not the, it's, the walkie-talkie I, I thing? I think, it's a, I think it's a radio. It's not, not a telephone. Now, uh, while we are at the, with the radio, uh, there's a new symbol on here you haven't seen yet. Uh, in fact, you haven't seen purple cards yet. So purple cards are more like event cards that have uh, a text on them to do something. Uh, since this is German, you already know what it does, but let me explain anyway. <laughs> um, now, uh, there's another icon on here, and that's this white card uh, that's crossed through. This means that after using this card for the for the effect that's printed on it, you have to get rid of it. So this is removed from your deck entirely, uh, meaning you can only use this once. And the effect says, take one of the cards from the market uh, and uh, put them on your discard pile. So this effectively lets you buy a card. Uh, but it doesn't matter how much the card costs and what you haven't seen yet, because it's not on, on camera, there's more than those six cards you see here. There's uh, another 12 stacks over uh, on, on the side of the uh, game with cards uh, that go uh, as high as costing, for example, five coins. Um, these will come into play once we got rid of uh, the cards here. So these stacks have three cards on them. If those three have been bought up and there's an empty space here, the next player who's buying something can now choose to buy a card from this off-market space 
uh, then would get the card and the remaining cards of that stack now fill in this market slot and um, can be bought regularly by uh, as with anybody else. Why is the radio so good? Well, because it lets you pick up a card either from this uh, market or from that space so you can get a really high value card early on which makes these um, really important to, to get. And it is take not buy which is pretty good yes yes it's another one it's your turn honey yes i uh i goofed a, a little bit i will just uh, play one card because i also want to have one of those awesome cards <laughs> uh, move and hope that yes i you did next, a good my thing. next turn will be a more interesting turn i'm going to play this card and i want the cartograph uh the Yes, the, the one that lets you draw two additional cards? Yes, okay. yes. And uh, he's pretty much uh, the... So, so Where's the discard by Conan so, Conan so this is going out of the game, so I'll just put it up here so that nobody will and ever take it. Uh, oh, no, that was in, uh, still... I'm still having things to move. So in theory, Sarah would have moved first and then bought a card. Because I didn't buy it. I took... It's an oh, action yeah. card. Oh, oh, I didn't buy. Um, yes, I'm, I'm I can still buy um, with my one little coin that I'm not going to do. You can buy a scout if you want to. Oh, do we have... Um, yeah, that's actually... One. Yeah, thank you, honey. Okay. See, sometimes he's a really nice So dude. Now, now I have four. I also want to have a radio. And you see, this is the second to last radio. Um, and I still have a coin left. Uh, now, I could be so nice as to... Uh, Get rid of this thing and i'll do that so i'll pay the coin to get rid of this and uh then could in theory start walking over that um while sarah is uh, doing her turn um i will explain to you the I'm going remaining to the caves. spaces that are there oh okay i'm going to the cave so you can explain the cave okay. one two so uh, and while you do that, I'm going to buy. So we have actually set up a little bit. The more advanced version, the starting version, has nothing on these fields. They are just like uh, any any mountain field. But uh, you can play with the caves, which are little uh, tiles here. And if you end your turn next to a cave, uh, you get to the top tile, which acts as a little bonus that you can use during your turn. Yay, I got another sailor. They can, they can uh, act as uh, little sailors or sometimes they give you something else or let you uh, get rid of cards from your deck. Um, it's, a, it's a gamble. Maybe they're good, maybe they're meh. Um, but they're usually useful. Um, the only other two fields that we haven't explained yet are these gray ones here, which uh, effectively just mean to move onto that space, you have to discard a card from hand, just onto your discard pile, not out of the game. So you could take this space just as a like a wild where you could play any cards to to move on to you just have to discard it uh, the important thing is if you discard it you don't get to use the special ability so you could discard a purple card without using it uh, in this case uh, let's say you have the radio on hand uh, you could discard it to move on that but that also means that you don't have to get rid of the card because you didn't use the special ability of that same goes for if you are using that for its money value to buy another card um, and the second field being this one uh, very similar but these cards don't go to the discard pile that you have to get rid of they go out of your deck and the important part is uh, those cards have to be the ones you have on hand so going next to uh, uh, get, uh, uh, get rid of uh, three cards space is kind of a risky proposal because you don't know yet what three cards you will have on hand next turn. Uh, you could block somebody there or you could just stand there and then they have Everybody to go, around, to go here around here because uh, these are mountain spaces. Yeah, but it's your turn, my love. My turn again. Okay. Um, hmm. I think I will also try to get to a cave. I will play one green to go there, a blue to go there. I will uh, then um, discard a pile uh, so my, to end my turn here and keep that one on hand and I'll end my turn there. So I'm getting this. So um, actually I'm using this right away. So this lets me get rid of a card I have on hand. So I'm spending that token to get rid of my 
fourth card in anticipation that now my chances to draw the two money card that is also in there have risen and uh, will yield me more money. So I'm not going to move because I just have the blue dude, but I have four coins, which means I'm going to get the last Fernsprechgerät. And I'm going to uh, discard the sailor as well. It's uh, okay. four cards. Now I, I'd say this is probably our last, last round and uh, then our last, yeah. our last turn. Um, I'm drawing another another four cards. Uh, now I also have uh, the the radio. So radio. Um, so here's how my turn will go. I'm I'm using the radio, so I'm getting rid of that to also get uh, the the cartograph. Uh, cartograph, which will allow me to have a bit, couple more cards on on hand. Um, and then I have uh, the photographer, and I could use these for money, so I have three coins, and since there's an empty space here, I can now check to maybe pick up um, a card from here that might be useful. Let me see, what's a three value card? Uh, I think I want to take uh, this card, which also lets you draw two cards and then lets you uh, um, get rid of two cards, so exile two cards, uh, um, get them out of your deck. And then you also remove this card. So this is a card that is great for cleaning up um, all those uh, older cards that you have on hand. Now, uh, since I bought uh, this card, uh, the remaining cards from this deck will now fill up this space and are for Sarah to buy in one of her turns as well. And I'm going to play the Cartograph. Cartograph. So not too shaky, Miss King. Um, let me see where am I? So that is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm gonna play these. One, two, three, four. Little addition to uh I didn't get a cave marker because uh, to actually get a cave marker, you have to end next to a cave. But if you remain on that spot, you don't get an additional one. So I had to move away from the cave and then back to the cave to to get a new. Yeah. Uh, then cave. I'm gonna play my token, and he's gonna swim. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna play these two, and I'm getting here. Okay. I'm kind of fast. The token now goes to the discard pile and uh, I'm good. And I think you're good yeah. as well um, because that is essentially the entire game loop. You try to optimize your deck uh, slash engine to get you through there. Uh, you will probably look at the board and see what types of movement of, of, uh, are more beneficial for you. There's more than these tiles in, in the game. And in fact, these tiles have two sides uh, that uh, can, can be used in a bunch of scenarios. So um, that's... Uh, there's a lot of stuff you you, you, you have to clean up first, right? You I'm cannot, sorry. You cannot leave. It like no, that. I am. Um, <clears throat> I'm slightly OCD. You know that. So uh, moving uh, moving through that, and uh, as I said, the end of the game is rather simple. If a player arrives at the um, at the at the end, spot. he wins. Um, and uh, then everything continues so that everybody has uh, an equal amount of turns. And if, if for some reason there's a tie, um, you just count how many of these um, uh, Road her blocks. hurdles, roadblocks have been collected and he who has the most wins or she. And if that is again a tie, write a strongly worded letter to Rainer Kinizia <laughs> and ask him to add... Who did win now? There's, there's actually prob probably I'm doing I'm doing something terrible. Let me check if there's a tiebreaker or No, I won't check. No, there, yes. there is one with the... So another roadblock, and I think was there another tiebreaker? There might have been. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't think, but I because we never tied. I always just lose. It makes it so much easier to no. But I wanted to show you uh, some some of the other setups anyway. So I will open up this box and show you 
We can go to the front so, camera now. So this is so this is the basic setup that we had for the gameplay. But then you have different setups here that are uh, have different uh, different difficulty grades uh, attached to them. Um, there's uh, in fact more of these uh, um, um, hmm. cave tiles in in here. There's more more. And more, so some, and, uh, some more, some oddly shaped in between. Uh, although these are not necessarily oddly shaped, but um, for some reason, since uh, uh, we've uh, we've been playing Mario Kart a lot, these look like or remind me of like your typical uh, racetrack chicanes there, where uh, you can go the the well the shorter path, but it's probably harder to pull off. So similar to here, you either have to. Uh, get rid of a card from your from your deck, or you have to have one with three. Uh, or machetes. you really have to swim a lot. Or yeah, or some some of these where you have uh, like a like a hairpin style. Uh, you can go through here with if you have four sailor planks, uh, but. There's actually not that much need to get a sailor. This is one of the maps that has a lot of blue on here. I, at least it felt to me. Um, they, yeah, they were. You can. And, and they're the ones that are uh, only represented with one card in your starting deck. All yes, the others and, have. And there's only one true sailor upgrade card, which is this one. Uh, all the others are either these multiple choice cards. But uh, anyway, we the, digress. The other um, uh, tiebreaker is so if if you both have the same amount of uh, those roadblocks, then the one with the highest value on that roadblock wins. I see. And if that's a tie? Oh, you, there's only one uh, two machete roadblock in there. There's only one two, yeah, two pointer. If, yeah, but if, if there's someone has like a one, one coin roadblock, or is it that value that's on here? Probably that value on here. Yeah. Okay. The number. It says number. Did it again. Ba -da -dee -da -dee. So that leads us into the next section. Once you say how many, how many players, how old, how fast. So, so this goes for a, a two to four uh, in, in juniors, I guess, because the, his real name is not Indiana. He's is actually called Junior. That's. That's, yeah, you know that, I know. Uh, and uh, ages 10 to 99, because... Uh, 100 at, and you cannot play anymore. At 100, uh, your hands fall off and you are unable to go to El Dorado. Well, I mean, 99 years are plenty of time to try to get to El Dorado, so I guess that's... For how long? It's actually 89 years, because you're not allowed for 10 or shorter. I was explaining the, the, the age <laughs> thing, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> this has not a time. Actually, I'm, <laughs> it has a time on here somewhere. It says 60 minutes. Although I have to say, that is, I think, for the more elaborate racetracks. Yeah. Uh, I think the uh, difficult ones that we played lately. Also, um, I would hazard the guess that the three-player game is the fastest out of them all because of the two-player. Mm -hmm. You are actually moving four guys, and the three-player game is the only one where you move just three guys. Um, so that should progress uh, uh, neatly. Uh, obviously, depending how good you are with hands of giants to shuffle the tiniest cards for kids. Um, but that's uh, a very personal issue. I'm just uh, which leads, up. Which now leads us into likes and dislikes. And, and I want to know more about your problems with the tiny cards and the, and the big hands. No? Okay, so I go. <laughs> I really like this as a family game with younger kids and then have, well, maybe not every day after dinner game, but like on the weekends, instead of uh, putting your kids in front of the TV um, to, well, keep them occupied and um, have enjoyment for like an hour, you can play this game. Definitely. It's a wonderful uh family game you could you could agree on watching indiana jones afterwards that's totally fair i think that's a perfect saturday evening mm. and night with a young family i'd say and or, or quarter main or any, yeah, any of those like that. yeah something like that and um i was kind of surprised though um 
the first uh, games that we played was with this setup, which is kind of like the suggested starter setup. And then lately we've been playing some more of those more difficult tracks. Mm -hmm. And there we really, we really had to get our five brain cells together and really look for, okay, how can I do that? How possible and how likely is it that I do get there, that I get the card when I need it, blah, blah. A bit more like, to, uh, a, bit, a, bit, a bit more tricky towards how am I going to optimize my deck to the point that I can really just race along or rush along. Mm -hmm. And then those um, games were more the ones where we said, okay, this is more like 45 minutes for two players, which would end in like 60 minutes for four players and then the mm -hmm. the time would be right but i, I didn't sub, I, I didn't um well i didn't think that there would be such tactical heavy strategy kind of tracks in there i was because it, it did really feel like the um new gamer or family, young family kind of a game. And I didn't expect to have like the real crunchy tracks in there so that you can really enjoy this game a lot as a more seasoned gamer that is maybe a bit more familiar with um, the deck building aspect or the, yeah, mm -hmm. the, uh, yeah the through the jungle. That thing. Uh, st start, starting out after the first two uh, plays, I was a little bit worried because um, effectively the the card selection is always the same. You uh, there's some cards with a little dot on here. Those are always in the starting market, and uh, then you have those twelve other other types of cards in the kind of secondary market um, that can be be moved in. But you're always playing with the same types of cards uh, available. So it's unlike a game like, where, like Dominion where you um, pick 10 out of 30 different types of cards uh, each time and mix things up uh, that, that way. Um, I thought at first, well, that makes the game a little bit boring because then... Or repetitive. You will probably find a strategy that works for you and try to do it again or execute it faster or slightly faster than last time to get you there. But um, I have to say, um, and that was uh, me assuming that um, the other racetracks, while being different, not being as different. Yeah, um, and but, no, different doesn't mean more difficult in that in but, sense. But then I realized that the other racetracks have sometimes a slightly different distribution in regards to what uh, symbols are needed, uh, where they are needed. Uh, sometimes, and uh, that's why I like these uh, smaller um, gate uh, parts uh, in, in, here, in here, like, like these, uh, they kind of force you um, to uh, to up your sailors early on, even if you don't want to. So let's take this game here. You can get away with having just one sailor in, in your deck um, because that's what yeah, you need to you get on the, the. That's what you need when you go yeah. onto that uh, very final space, um, and uh, can get through the other ones. But if you have this in in between, um, this makes it much more difficult than uh, just uh, having one sailor on here and kind of forces you to uh, pick up one early on. So um, what I now do like about this is when, when playing, looking at the track and getting just a, a rough distribution for me in my head, me seeing, looking at this saying, yeah, this looks like maybe have to uh, one one third green, so I want to have a lot of green in my deck. Then uh, next would be maybe a quarter of yeah. money, uh, maybe up that a little bit because I want to buy be able to buy more expensive cards. But that's the other decision. And if there's a blue one or if there's some something left and I can pick one up, I'll take that. But I will not prioritize to to get blue. And that's kind of the how you how you influence your deck so uh, i like that here it turns the deck building a little bit on its head where usually you build your deck based on what's in your deck to enhance the engine and go and uh, have that turn mm -hmm. out 
But here the uh, Tehran more money, is, more victory points yeah. or something. But here, um, since the uh, the requirements are always shifting because the terrain is shifting, uh, even while playing uh, right here, uh, you need green. But over here, if you don't have some high value money cards in here, this will keep you up quite quite a bit. Um, and I think that's that's an, an interesting take on uh, um, and approaching that. So um, I think the. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say this is in in the category of easy easy to learn, hard to to master. But there's more to this than just um, having a deck building game with just a, a minor or an, uh, what's a good word like a, a like with a small selection of cards that you get to know by heart very early on. But that actually doesn't win you the game automatically because you have that one combo. Yes, there are some cards in here that I think um, are so lucrative that everybody who didn't get one is having a hard time. Um, major among them, uh, the, the cartograph uh, that lets you draw additional cards, but that's like with any deck building game, yeah. cards that give bigger you a hand bigger hand is, size um, yeah. are really good. Um, then again, um, I, at first I thought, well, these these cards that you discard after using them, like uh, the treasure chest, which gives you four coins, but then you get rid of this card, um, or uh, uh, later on this this powerful machete, which gives you six machete symbols, and uh, yes, uh, uh, that these are kind of weird to pick up cards that give you just this one shot effect, but they are pretty good, and it's actually pretty good to keep your deck slim in here. Yeah. Um, some other ones that are really cool would be, for example, this uh, the native who uh, costs five and you can move to an adjacent space uh, as long as you're allowed to move through that space. So you can still not go onto a space where <laughs> another player is standing or go onto a mountain. But you could play this card to just go over to this space or onto yeah, just a three that. machete place yeah. and not care about that. So this is also pretty good. Um, he knows the shortcuts. Yes, the uh, uh, and uh, then then again, uh, all the money cards are women. So I don't know if there's a if that's a statement, but I don't think so. But the, there's the journalist and uh, the millionaire. Was there some some rich lady in the Indiana Jones? I don't remember. I think typically for for these movie, if there is a girl, it's either the really um, can drink a lot and beat you up if you're not nice uh, type type of uh, interesting woman slash love interest or then the other one would be the I'm from the big city comfortable life I'm the fish out yeah. of water in yeah. the jungle yeah. kind of and then she learns to like it it's like yeah that plot now I was just wondering yeah, why screaming a lot of snakes is what I have in memory although that wasn't a millionaire so Whatever. I was just asking if because I I tend to forget hmm. characters in movies and stuff. So I thought maybe maybe I just did not remember. But yeah, other than that, um, I I like uh, the theme for this particular game with the jungle de jungle. Um, though I have to say, other than the um, uh, pictures on the cards, there is not a lot of theme necessary to this could be a car yeah. race or something but actually the I, things that it did with the with the pictures i really liked a lot I, so it's not just plastered on with oh come on let's make yeah, the I, jungle kind of a thing but uh, it could have another theme as well i well, i think it it works out pretty well i mean yeah, uh, as, I, as i said i'm 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 quite pleasantly surprised i mean uh and Kinizia games typically tend to be a little bit more on the mechanical side than on the thematic side um but i do think that uh, it it works out uh, well uh, here as well i uh, maybe you could do a car racing thing but i actually like that you have yeah. on the cards these different types of person or people who can get you through that type of terrain there if you, yeah. if that would be a car thing 
I don't know. You you would have to pick up a card that's like a different tire type to, to yeah, get your ring or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or but, that uh, certain certain tires because it's like uh, rainy and you have like yeah, or maybe like, like in the Sahara those I, I, uh, I like, kind of races. And I stuff. like that actually for like a, for a deck building thing, and I'm more a guy that pays attention to the mechanical things mm. of, of those. So I, I do appreciate a theme, but uh, I'm usually not playing a game for the theme, but for the... Uh, uh, rarely. We have a few that we play for the theme, but again, you can count them on one hand, mm. and that's, again, very, very few. But um, I like that it wasn't... Because, um, you know, last year... Either you were on Mars or you were in London, Victorian London, that is. And I really like that there uh, is, a, is a game out that is v really cool and not with those two very popular themes that were... Oh, so this one came out this year. Was it? I thought end of 16, no? no? This, Was this it came, 17? This came out in... Uh, well, at least BGG says, and BGG is always wrong. <laughs> it's our god. Um... It's board game geek. god. No. <laughs> board god geek. No. Board god. <laughs> no. No, I thought. No, when I look when I look okay, at the English was, version, it says uh, both. both yeah, and uh, the German one. Did uh, German first edition came out early 2017. Oh, okay. And I I had for whatever <clears throat> reason I thought it came <clears throat> out last late last year. Anyways, but it, it's nice. We, there weren't or the, there's only few good <clears throat> uh, jungle themed yeah, uh, um, and, games. And it's it's kind of the the double surprise. First off, uh, exactly. Rainer Kinizia games yeah. typically more mechanical less theme and then deck building games in in general i always feel have a really hard time to, to get, get the, the, theme. the theme part yeah. done properly and um i was uh, i was always hoping for more games to use deck building just as a as a part to drive the game forward but not be the entire game so i like this uh, it's a race, and uh, yes, the, the deck building part is literally your engine to uh, have your race through that, but it's not just the deck building game. And I think this would have been boring if it would just be the deck building part. Exactly. I think this the modular map part is actually the thing that makes this interesting mm -hmm. um, by uh, uh, changing, and you have to change your deck to, to yeah. that. I mean, uh, you cannot go to your standard combo and uh, beat everybody that's yeah, new at the table. I, I mean, I could even imagine that there's, uh, uh, although that would more add in a, a, a version requiring a little bit more luck, that you explore the tiles as you go and you don't see all the tiles. Oh, that are what's available, coming up! Oh, uh, that's available because, mean. Because then, then you cannot as well build up your deck. So if you have, no. if you have really uh, uh, math nuts at your table who are good at pausing this and then having. Uh, a good idea of how many how many green cards, how many blue cards, and so on are in the in the deck, and uh, get really powerful with okay, my on average my deck should get me through this. You could disrupt this by uh, uh, by doing that. Although uh, what I also found interesting is that the the manual actually comes with a, a little text here that explains to you how to make interesting tracks. Uh, so that's uh, also nice because yeah. the, uh, depending on how you arrange these, they can be a little bit boring. Or, um Yeah, I, I mean, uh, uh, you could easily turn this over to, uh, let's say, this uh, uh, set setup if you wanted to, which um, would make it very easy for uh, for someone who is using uh, green and blue. Green and blue. So you can uh, avoid the yellow, pretty much. Um, this yeah. way around, not so much. Nope. But that might be an interesting uh, choice if you have something where uh, going through the center is actually a lot better than going around the, the corners or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Shall we write? Or do you have any more wise words? Um, not much. I mean, uh, I think we mentioned this uh, is a nominee, uh, a nominee yeah. for Spiel des Jahres. I said it uh, in the beginning. Year. Um, 
which I think for some time will be the last nominee mm -hmm. we talk about because we're waiting for deliveries. Surprise! Uh, if your game is uh, is a nominee, then uh, suddenly everybody buys it, and it's really hard to get. So we are waiting on some reprints to to pick them up and then talk about those if they ever arrive. But they should. Um, this, well, we uh, had we had a jump cut earlier, and it was because. Games arrive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't think. It's, but it's not the it's ones not, I think. It's, it's no. not those games. No, no, I no. Don't we're so. we're still waiting on. I think Magic Maze and uh, the um, Scavengers of the North Sea or something like yeah. that is. It's probably called, but that actually has to be reprinted. So that uh, Magic Maze just has been reprinted. We're just waiting for it. Anyway, yeah. um, let's rate. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah, this this gets this gets us thumb, thumbs up. Yep. Uh, if uh, if it would have just been the deck building part, I would be like, mm, not that really getting yep. me. But uh, that combination with uh, with the modular maps, the racing, and using the deck building for for that, and being still a kind of um, well. Uh, it's still a sh mentally short game, so so to speak. Yeah. So you don't get overly thinky with this, um, and uh, can do that in an evening. Even maybe play two rounds of this without feeling exhausted afterwards. Yeah, different maps um, and stuff, yeah. and uh, have a, have a good time shouting yeah. at other people. Oh, move away! I'm something like that. Yeah, I'm I'm totally with you. So funny story. Blah. Funny stories experiences. We played this with two players and with four. We didn't play with three. And uh, first game, two players. Guess who won, of course. And then we played it with the four players to show uh, our friend group. And uh, Daniel was sitting out. I, I wasn't playing. You weren't at playing. All. Officially. Uh, he was the rule master. <laughs> I'm. It, it's very, it's a very odd thing that the one best friend sitting next to you then gets a lot of advice on what cards might be good in I his was, case, and the I friend racing making, through <laughs> and us like, generous <laughs> yeah, very general for his deck, <laughs> not for the other players. So it's uh, was, yeah, he, he. We said he was kind of playing in a team with Christian, was it, which is totally fine, and the team won, but. Who was um, just giving general thoughts on what, yeah, one, what, what one could do. For his place and for his deck. Oh, you I might, you might want to go for this kind there. I was also you didn't that do that for Valentin, for Tina, or for me. You I just did it for Christian. I, I no. was always, hmm, <laughs> if, you, if you would have drawn a better card now, you could have gone forwards. I was being super helpful. I yeah, for him, <laughs> not for us. Which was the funny thing. So you kind of played, which is totally cool. We made this for five players. <laughs> that was my point. It was not you sitting out and just, oh, I cannot play with the guys, but you being kind of like uh, the the co-player for, for Christian. That was a lot of fun. But we were, we were way more... Uh, oh, how can I do that with the with the difficult maps that we mm -hmm. that we played? And uh, I think yeah, I, we're gonna if, play with those more. If I if I can hand you another recommendation, uh, play the starting map once and then try and then to move okay. on yeah. to the other ones. Also, uh, even though this says the the caves are something you can add on later, I think you can it's add them enough. in right away, right away. and. Um, they are not adding that much complexity and it's just a little bit more different things going on yeah. uh, uh, you just you just uh, add the thought of okay am i going to stop here or am i go as far as i can go with my cards which you usually do if you mm -hmm. don't have the case that's the only thing that is added so yeah, so, yeah. I would just moving you, the... moving you sometimes two spaces to the left or to the right, where you would just try to get the shortest path. Um, yeah. To oh, uh, to the goal. <laughs> All right. Any other any other experiences? Any memories that pop up in your head? Did I cover it all? No, that's it. Uh, uh, yeah. One one major advice: if you're like me, 
really resist the urge of okay and this is the cut stack let's shuffle oh crap oh he did that I did <laughs> yeah that he did that twice <laughs> and literally with the second shot uh, I am such an idiot the good thing is for this filming here I didn't set up the game so you weren't you weren't tempted and I kind of when I when I laid out the cards in the markets was like yeah it's a good thing that Daniel's not <laughs> setting up you would have probably shuffled oh there's yeah. a stack of cards it needs to be shuffled <laughs> it's it's the law the law of the jungle <laughs> shuffle the card the cards have to be shuffled <laughs> and shuffled always well. be shuffling shuffling it's a, you did the same thing with uh, Fable Jews. You also shuffled yes. the cards. It, it happens. Ah. I, I still have the picture of Ross's despair that <laughs> you're shuffling the cards in my head. Uh, but that we, we already talked about that. You can go back to the Fable Jews video. You will see. Anyway, so let's let's end the video. We're going to leave you now, uh, hoping that you enjoyed this uh, video and the overview of uh, El Dorado. If you did, you can give us a like, because this is now the end part of the video where we will try to get you to push that like button. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, you can click that subscribe button. And the bell uh, next to it so that you're notified whenever a new video is yes. released. More importantly, you can now dedicate your life exclusively for, to the comment for section. our channel. <laughs> And uh, try to get other people to watch what we're doing. If it is or isn't for their benefit, it doesn't matter to us. We are <laughs> <Wow>. happy anyway <laughs> for everybody who uh, is in our audience. Yeah. Lucky you. <laughs> He's so sweet, is he not? Sheesh. Happy Sunday, folks. We're going to see you next week. Bye. Bye. We're so charming. Like an old rusty kind of a nail. Matosa. Matosa. <laughs>